Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. We're going to be doing some more T2 Electric Solo Abyss in the Confessor. My Confessor that is made to do high set combat exploration and also T2 Abyss Solo. It's a pretty fun ship to use and I think it looks really good. And it's able to do both activities pretty decently actually, even though it's able to do multiple of them with pretty much the same fit. The only difference is this fit right here is a travel fit I've used because I've been recently in low sec doing a 4 out of 10. You can see the previous video I did on that. So we'll get a bit of a repair here because I actually took a bit of damage because I did a refuge and then I realized I'm still in a travel fit so I didn't manage to repair myself but you do this refuge so quickly I didn't even need to have a rep armor repair to <laughs> do this. Okay, so we need to just refit to the ma main combat fit which is then two heat sinks and a small armor repair. Good, so you see how like, really close the fitting is. It's very small, like close to being overloaded with CPU or power gear, but we're just about what well, this safe I made here and some invading Garistas guys. I don't know what they're doing here. Maybe there's a forward operating base of some sort. I've never actually done that kind of stuff, so I don't really exactly know how that stuff works. But it is seems to be something that a lot of people do. or well, not a lot of people, but I've heard that a lot of like high set corps tend to do it because uh, it's like uh, you can get some decent isk, but you need a bit of a small group at least. I'm trying to focus mainly on the sort of solo aspect of stuff from time to time. But from time to time, I do like to do the abyss stuff with my friends. It's pretty fun. Okay, agitated electrical. Let's go. Let's go. It's really nice that the T2 electrics are still really cheap because usually electrics are a lot more expensive than the other ones. But I've noticed that T1 and T2 filaments, they have hardly any price difference when it comes to the different weather types. It's only T3 and up, you notice bigger differences. Okay, let's go and knock out these dammers over here. Just start shooting them straight away. They're going to do quite a bit of damage when they get their damage spooled up. But it'll be alright. We'll knock them out with a gleam when they get in range. See that? He's almost dead. We'll make our way towards the tra uh, the combinative cache, actually. Use Gleam here. And switch this one to Gleam too. There we go. Better tracking with the Gleam. Good to use if you have small little frigates like this who are orbiting very close. But it has worse range than Imperial Navy multi-frequency, so just keep that in mind. But we've got a good thermal resistance, so we'll tank very well against the Triglavians. See here, 70% thermal and 73% explosive. A very good tank against uh, the Triglavians. And if we go in defense mode, I think we have over 200 HP per second tank against Triglavians. So we're very, very anti-Triglav, you could say, this fit is. Uh, there are sometimes the Kikimoras, they can get a lot of DPS if they spool up. So just keep that in mind. You always want to take out the Kikimoras because they will do a lot of damage. I think max amount you can get in a T2 is four Kikimoras. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think max amount is four Kikimoras and I haven't gathered that and it was all right, but I mean, it did come a little close because I let them spool up quite a bit. You have to focus them straight away. Focus them and kill them straight away. Try to keep range if you can. You're not as fast as the Kikimoras, but you can try to keep a little bit out of range. Like outside 30 kilometers, they shouldn't do a whole lot of damage there. And we should actually put a tracking speed script here too, to increase our tracking speed capabilities. There we go, and just a bunch of rogue drones here, roguey drones. There we go, just one-shotted that cache, really delicious. Mm-hmm. Can even just group, I like to actually group these in FAM and the Abyss, because usually you don't one-shot stuff or almost one-shot stuff here as much as you do in the Gristers Refuges and that kind of stuff. So that's why it's simple to just have it one, like it is one group. But when it comes to Gristers Refuges, often you'll one-shot them. So it's just better to have them in groups so you can attack more at the same time, because the frigates in them are so weak. Okay, go here. Oh, we should use Aurora, actually. Always go with Aurora when you enter a new room. That's so I try to do. And have the rain script as well, because then you can do damage straight away. It really makes a difference being able to do damage straight away. Okay. And go for the spark, guys, because they will do a bit more damage here, because we've got EM resistors a bit on the low side, 56%. So we just don't want to have them do a lot of damage to us, because rogue drones, never underestimate the rogue drones. They can actually do a lot of damage if they get close to you. Just keep that in mind. They will do a lot of damage if they get close to you. Especially if they're hitting that good damage type that is easy to... Or like that you've got very low. 
Okay, so after this guy, I'm going to take out the snare cast. It's just going to web me. I don't want to be slow because these guys are going to down, go down very quickly. And we want to do this site as quick as possible. So if we're webbed, we're going to do this slower because the cumulative cache is going to be further away. Or oh, hard to get close to it. And go with Gleam. There we go. Good tracking. Decent range as well. I mean, not got crazy range, but beams always give you the good range. So even though they're like eight kilometers away, we're still able to hit them somewhat in optimal. Not perfectly, but somewhat. There we go. Snare caster. Getting hit pretty hard. We can obviously switch this to tracking speed if we really needed to. But I think it's all right here. Lock this up too. Come on, lock up, please. My control key wasn't working right there. Okay. I think it's plate forge out. Oh, we just two shot this guy. Oh, we got tracking speed as well. Oof, 250 tracking, so good. Because it's just gonna, like, laser beam them to death. <laughs> oh, this guy, the rogue drone stood no chance right there. Go with the uh, propulsion mode. Go a bit quicker. Switch to Aurora. We wanna have that when we go to the next room. And we're soon on the last room now. Grab all this loot right here. Not a whole lot. This is stuff from the previous site I've done before. Still not sold all my loot. We're a little bit of a loop in here going on right here because we're not sold anything. We're going on a big adventure with the Confessor, a long campaign on the Confessor. That's what I really like about it. You're sort of like on an expedition when you go in this Confessor, doing the different stuff you can do in high sec of New Eden. Okay, let's go here and use the sharpshooter as well. So you have the good range. You have also the good damage. Let's see now what I've got here. Kick him more. I want to take him out first. Pull range as well. Kimura is absolutely the number one priority here, but we got the standard. They got Tachyon Kyle, I believe, as well. It's helping them get a bit closer. And I think we will have to get closer and use Imperial Navy multi frequency. Yep, because he's getting close. Okay. Imperial Navy multi frequency. This is what I think is very dangerous with certain Abyss waves that have, like, uh, they when they get close, they're deadly because you can have a Tachyon Cloud. And the Tachyon Cloud can just yeet them all right in your face. So you have to be very careful for those kind of waves, like a Rogue Drum Battle Cruiser, Kikimoras as well. You have a bit of a time buff with the Kikimoras initially, because they take a bit of time to get close to you. But if they've got a good like Tachyon Cloud placement that this makes them get in your face straight away, you can be quite deadly right there. So you have to watch out, take out the Kikimoras fast. But again, we tank very good against Triglavians, we've got good thermal and explosive resistance. So, you'll generally speaking be a very tough nut to crack when it comes to Triglavians. But just always respect the Kikimoras. Never underestimate them, because they can get you low very quickly if they're allowed to spool up. Because they have significantly more damage than the Damovics. Significantly more damage. 2.1 million. Okay, not a whole lot of isk right there. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. You get sometimes good loot. Sometimes the bad loot. Same way with the DD sites, you get sometimes the good loot and you get sometimes the bad loot. That was a pretty fast run right there. Like under seven minutes. Or maybe just about seven minutes. I'm going to put the tracking speed script in right here because they're orbiting us quite close. So they're in gleam range. We'll just benefit us to have the tracking speed script right here. There we go. Shoot like absolute laser beams with this gleam. We are laser beams, but oh, again, then we get the good tracking assist pylon as well. Really delicious. And we can just exit here when we exit. And you know something that I actually should do is use defense mode when I get out here in case someone tries to gank me. I mean, I don't think people are going to want to gank a confessor in a T2, but you never know. There are these people who like to gank us. And we have not got extremely cheap modules, so it could be worth some lower level gankers to attack us. See now what we got here. Nothing here. Okay, good. Very chill, very chill. That was. Let's see now. Do we have any more filaments? Because we can run some more actually. Got some agitated electrical filaments right here. Yep. Have we? How is the ammo looking on its damage right here? Aurora one percent. Uh, we've got a lot of backup ammo too as well. So we've got quite a bit of ammo. I packed quite a bit of ammo in here. This thing takes a bit of time to despawn, but when it's despawned, we can spawn another abyssal site. There we go. Destroyer. Let's jump in here. Activate filament. Oh, I wanted to have the optimal range on. You can switch mode when you're traveling between conduits, but you can't switch anything with like on your ship modules, unfortunately. 
must be some unstable abyssal depths making us not able to do anything to our modules but the internal configuration of the ship is able to be altered okay so we've got some velas over here a very afk friendly right here they're just weaker dynamics you can essentially think unless you really are trying to speed tank they're weaker dynamics the, these drones you can't speed tank them or it's basically impossible to speed tank them so you have to have some level of brute force tank but usually it's just a weaker variant of standard dynamics since they disintegrate it's hard to do any damage okay time for some gleam there we go Take out this anchoring Vila Damovic over here. I think they also do a bit of the EM damage too. So that will make their drones do a little bit more damage as well because reduced EM resistance. Well, they're tanking just fine. A pretty balanced tank, I would say. Just to kill these a bit faster because I feel like it's going a bit slow. But you can get quite explosive when you're in the T2 Abyss. Okay, we've got this biocumulative cache over here. We're earning a tiny bit less than T3s in crews would do. And I think in some ways we may be earning more or just about the same because the filament prices are so cheap. And then also we're doing them, I think, a tiny bit faster than crews do T3s. I think a tiny bit faster. Especially at this price point. Gila's, the hull itself, costs more than this whole setup does. So I think this is a very good alternative if you want to do the do the t2s in destroys instead of t3s in gilas or cruisers how fast was that that was pretty fast two minutes decent time that's a very good time okay gleam doing good work with against these triglavians jump here see what we get here what kind of special spicy spawns do we get uh blast grip okay this guy wants to want to take them out fast actually we'll take out this spark grip he'll web us in place be a bit deadly in case they keep us in place so we want to just take him out quick there we go good and we'll take out spark grip because spark grip does em damage we have lowest resist in em resists to die fast and that's it i'm doing a glances off shots so i'm not doing good shots right here because transversal is pretty bad i think okay we will have a tight spot right here because they're getting close so to be a little bit careful right here, just do not want to get popped by their really high DPS that they have when they get close. Royal Drone Battle Cruiser, especially that Spark Grip guy over there. He will do a lot of damage when he comes close. The Blast Grip will not do as much because we have very high explosive resist, but EM is not particularly high here since we're in the electrical site, reducing our EM resist quite by quite a bit. Pure Navy Multifrequency. Oh, this will come close. He's going to get close soon. Oh, Penetrating Shot, 1000 damage. That was pretty good. We can even make our way towards that extraction node over there got a grazing shot and that did a lot of damage okay put the blast grip here make the foot away for this extraction node and we should be able to tank now just fine with one of them and i mean if, if we just go point blank on this guy he will still kill us i think but uh it'll go a lot smoother especially since he's also a blast grip like the ex he does explosive damage so we'll generally speaking have an easier time with him than that spark grip before see penetrating shot did 300 to almost just under 300 but the other guy spark grip he had em damage he did it in a penetrating shot he did 300 damage oh was that a wrecking shot i think that was a wrecking shot let's see now logs here what did we get right there was it a a wrecking shot yeah a wrecking shot so imagine what the spark grip would have done he would have done all our um, right there so that's why it's very important to have this damage control so we can at least survive the wrecking shots otherwise it'll be goodbye confessor <laughs> okay so we've already done this and it was not at all worth us going to this silly extraction node over here but you never know i got before once one million from this so that was pretty decent seeing that you can get one whole million from one of these extraction nodes hopefully we can get some good loot from this bio a combinative cache Please give me good loot. Like you see here, as explosive resist 73. So quite a big difference right here. We're also minus 30% EM penalty, so it'll be very scary to get a wrecking shot from those uh Rogue Drum Battle Cruisers who are doing spark grip, so it could be potentially even worse. It makes me be a bit ugh. Just make sure you kill them quickly and you should have no problems. But it is pretty risky when it comes to Rogue Drum Battle Cruisers. I would say it's probably one of the most difficult ways. Also, actually, yeah. 
Something you could also do is go in defense mode if you're taking really a lot of damage. It'll tank a bunch more then. See here. Look at our resist right here. So good. And our signature radius is also going to be smaller. So that could also be something. I keep forgetting about it because I'm so used to just using sharpshooter mode all the time since you do so much more damage. But that's also kind of like an emergency thing you can do. And since we've got beams, we'll still be able to hit stuff when we're in uh, the defense mode. When we're using pulses and we go in defense mode, we basically are not able to hit anything because the range is so crap if you're not in sharpshooter mode. Since pulse lasers have naturally very short range, then not in sharpshooter, you have even worse range. When you go in defense mode, you can barely hit anything. But here, we could probably use standard and maybe even multi-frequency when we're in defense mode and still have a decent amount of optimal range going on. Okay. Sharpshooter over there. Now what do we have in this next wave over here? A Drakovac Kikimura. Kikimura, again, high priority, high priority target right here. I want to take out straight away and then we could... This Drakovac will have... Well, actually, you know what? We can just charge in because Drekovac will have a hard time hitting us. He will probably hit us a bit on the way here, but we can actually speed tank him quite a bit. Okay, and he doesn't do a whole lot of damage as well. Kikimura does good applied damage that ramps up by quite a big margin. So we'll probably use Imperial Navy multi-frequency after this cycle right here. There we go. Kikimura is basically dead now. Oof, that was a big shot for you from the Drekovac. Want to pull a little bit of range right here. Transversal as well. Give us a bit of better transversal going on. If we orbit this Drekovac at 500, it should be decent because I have done that before. Okay, and we'll orbit this Drekovac at 500 just like that. We can even go and pop this biocommentative cache right there. Uh, they're getting a bit of remote reps from his buddy right here, I think. Or maybe the... Yeah, you see that? He got a bit of remote reps right there. It's alright. See here now, he can't hit us at all. And we'll use Gleam as well. And the thing you want to just watch out here is wrecking shots because he is spooling up. But these Drekovax don't take a whole lot of time to kill. So it's alright. I remember when they came out. I think maybe the CCP has nerfed the Drekovax something because I remember when they came out, it felt, they felt a lot tankier. But it could be that in higher tier abysses when I did them that they had a lot of remote reps or something. That's what made them feel a lot tankier. Mm. You see here, it's really easy to speed tank these guys. Not at all hard. And I'm in sharp shooter mode and I destroy at 200 meters a second. So they don't have the best tracking. And go for the bioadaptive. There we go. Open this up. Aurora, I guess, but we don't even need to care here. What we could use is actually Gleam. In case this is an Abyssal Ganker, overheat this, overheat this, and just wreck him to pieces when we're in defense mode. And that could be something to do. Just have the Gleam loaded in case. Actually, no, probably multi frequency, because in case, just range would be an issue. You can see here the DPS we have, 470 DPS, so that's almost the amount as a, co a Coercer would have. So basically it would have similar DPS as a Coercer, but a lot more tank. So we'll very likely win the 1v1. But if there are two Coercers, it'll be a different story. <laughs> or any other kind of destroyer for that matter. Good loot. Nah, not that great loot either. Mm, I hope it would have been better, but it's not that great. We're sitting on a total of 20 million here from three Abyssal Sites be pretty bad on the second two the first one was a little bit good over 10 million and then these second two have been not that great but again it's good that you have the very cheap filament prices just keep that in mind it's very nice to have that good filament prices we finish this in a little bit slow side over nine minutes it's okay it's okay that's what you sometimes have when you have a little bit slower waves okay Looks like it's pretty safe right here. So we'll just dock up here. Go back to our base where our training implants are. So there we go. Some T2 Abyss in the Confessor. Goes pretty smoothly. Just watch out for those wrong John Balakruz and use a bit of common sense as well. It's pretty fun. I think this ship looks so good and it's nice to do a lot of different activities with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.